Now, I know that they say that Thursdays are for throwbacks, but the phrase I like to use is thoughtful Thursday. As Lisa Nichols says, your whole life is a manifestation of the thoughts that go on in your head. And so today, there's going to be a lot of food for thought here on Jasiri. Good morning. I'm Tolulokwe Adileru Balogo. I love saying that. Adileru Balogo. Okay. <laughs> mm. Well, I am Omotunde Adewale David. I'm calling it Positive Thursday because I only have to endure Catherine's antics for one more day. The stars indeed are looking out for me, and they are on my side. <gasps> Poetic. Justice. And I, Catherine Obiang, refuse to give up. Underneath all that dark roasted coffee beans are sweet and spongy marshmallows. So you can love to hate me, but I know you really love me, Lolo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what to say. But before we get into the show proper, our prayers are with the people of Plateau State in the Mangu and Burkin Ladi local government areas, where there are reports of simultaneous attacks by bandits and lives were lost yet again and properties destroyed. Our hearts go out to the communities and the families affected in these difficult times. We pray for healing in our land as the government continues to fight against insecurity and insurgency in Nigeria. And we're seeing so many security issues come up, but from the Christmas Eve attacks in Plateau to this now, we call on the government to put a stop to these senseless killings, to the wanton destruction of property. Every Nigerian needs to be able to feel safe in their homes and in their, communi and their communities. While we can offer our prayers, we expect government to live up to its responsibility and take action. And it is action that we want and we deserve. I mean, sorry to start the show on such a, a heavy note, but these things deserve attention and our collective voices. On Jasiri today, we have the uh, uh, former Commissioner of Education, Lagos State, Paula Shade Adifisayo, joining us after the break to discuss pursuing quality, safe and affordable education in Nigeria. But... Before we, do, we get into all that, we have an update on the Styrofoam mm -hmm. and, and single-use plastics ban recently implemented in, in Lagos. The federal government has responded saying it supports the ban and the rest of the country could be facing the same fate, hinting that they will be banning some plastic products in the near future. Mm. Plastic products like soft drink bottles, bottled water, vegetable oil or FMCG products you see, the problem I have is that they always come out with these vague statements <laughs> that are very, they're just left to open in misinterpretation and misunderstanding. One ex-user commended, uh, commented that the issue is the disposal and not the product. The issue is our waste disposal culture. They are being reactive and not proactive. And in the long run, I'm also glad we covered this yesterday because it was a question we asked our guest, Alexander Ahigbe, as well. The Minister of State for Environment, Isaac um, Salako, said in a statement yesterday that Nigerians should prepare for the inevitable. But in the meantime, we are advised to take personal and deliberate environmental actions to explore the growing recycling market for plastic waste. There's no set date for the nationwide ban, but the minister also said that an interagency committee has been set up to continue consulting across government, businesses, and with all stakeholders for a sustainable solution that is sensitive to the Nigerian context. It's comforting to hear because, you know, a point we didn't get to raise yesterday is that the net of responsibility needs to be cast wider before the Ministry of Environment. The Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry should also be involved. There has to be a cooperation and a collaboration between all stakeholders. Honestly, it's almost time. It's almost as if in Nigeria we work backwards. Uh, we start with a decision mm -hmm. that comes without warning, and then we now scrabble to retrace our steps and plug in the loopholes. We saw it with the Okada ban, yep. uh, Twitter before it became X, mm -hmm. uh, cryptocurrency, the Naira redesign tactics, and now it's happening again. Whereas it should be the other way around. Uh, we need to think through before jumping, you know, headlong into some very dicey situations. Anyway, we will be taking a break. 
Yeah, and we'll I think be back. You know, I told you guys yesterday. Sometimes government do uh, government. We said that they yesterday. do this thing. Yep. They'll come out with the harshest measure, yeah. and then they will now sort of, you know, they'll say, "Oh, everybody makes a noise, shouts, and everything," mm -hmm. and then they'll say, "Okay, we've graciously well, listened <laughs> to you. We're going to step back." Because meanwhile, they knew that if they came yes. out the easy way, and I think sometimes for for people like Nigerians, you need to come out tough. You need to come out very, very hard. You know, because at the end of the day. It's going to happen. You know, we said this thing yesterday. Yes, Honestly, what just irks me or makes me very sad as a person is that we have stakeholders. Mm -hmm, yeah. We have, we have um, intelligent mm -hmm, people. Yes. In fact, we have so many people that are even, you know, they have targeted wisdom, maybe a professor. Mm. There are so many resources. Why do we not leverage on them? before we make policy decisions. Because when we do these things, you know it has a ricochet effect. effect. But if we've done our homework mm -hmm. very tidy, honestly, there's some things that you will anticipate mm -hmm. before it happens. I don't Not think that every time we have to back, back, backtrack. backtrack. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think we, uh, we, uh, we take the environment seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we neglect, or the pe people who are designated at these positions always neglect. It's, oh, it's easy to overlook. Mm. Oh, yeah, but you know, this is how it's always been. There's more pressing things to look after. There's more important things to take notice of. And so we just keep pushing it back and until Nigerians become emotional about it. Mm. And you know when we are emotional, we are emotional. Yeah. Tolu will enter when Tolu did it. Tolu will enter her go much or Yoruba. Sometimes English is not enough. Do you remember? Yes, so it is English is not enough. It's just not enough. So that's how we are here. Yeah. So in Nigeria, we are very emotional until we emotionally react to something. Yes. Mm. Even if it is a good idea, Dear, yeah. we will fight. No, what do they say? Nail and tooth, tooth, tooth and, and nail. <laughs> we will fight tooth and nail yeah. before we agree. Mm -hmm. And you know, I said the same thing yesterday. Sometimes we're supposed to have politicians and leaders who see the future, who yes. project, who pro and they will kick the populace kicking and screaming into that future. Mm -hmm. But our own, because a lot of them are not supposed to be where they are, yeah. they're very much tied to the public goodwill. So if we shout small at them, yeah. they're like, OK, OK, wait, wait, let's talk yeah. about this. Yeah. Vision, it's not supposed to be. Honestly, visioning is our problem in the yes. country. I cannot lie. Because if you have a visionary leader, they have seen ahead. Telling and you. everything that we're doing should align towards that great power future that we see for the country. But, you know, it's contrary every time. It's always contrary. Mm -hmm. That means if we have no vision, we just keep going, yeah. hoping that we get it right, yes. <laughs> especially in football, it becomes, thinking that because we pray, we're going to win a tournament. Ah, don't what go, should uh, happen to the don't country? Don't go to football. Uh, Lord, actually it's prepared. Lord, Lord. It's no, no, okay. don't go to football. It's okay. You don't do. I'm already in a dilemma with this football that don't you're be going to. No, really. I, I keep seeing. I'm, we're I'm going on a break, but I, Catherine, no, Catherine, 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 I'm Catherine eyeing is, you. Do you know why I'm eyeing her? Yeah. This dress. Guys, there's a story behind this dress, <laughs> and it's annoying me, but we'll talk about it later because we have serious matters We will matters not at hand. talk about it. We're going to be taking a quick, uh, a quick update. Uh, of course, we're giving you the updates on the styrofoam situation, but also we have a lot more coming your way on Jasiri. Education is at the top of our list today. It's on the top of the rundown, and that's where we're going right after this break. It's Jasiri. Stay with us. And welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are tuned to Jasiri on New Central TV. And don't forget to hashtag or Jasiri, and then you can just follow us on all our social media, um, everywhere on social media, trust me. And uh, right now, we're going to a very important topic, and we'll be taking that now. They said this January, honestly, it's a basketball situation. <laughs> Trust me, uh -huh. the I know go grief for anybody motor is catching up on everyone, especially celebrities, companies, and even governments. Uh, even inanimate <laughs> objects <laughs> are not left out. <laughs> they are not green for anybody. Oh this God. latest is that the Lagos State government has ordered the shutdown of Lekki Conservation Center for urgent repairs in response to a viral video showing the poor and unsafe conditions of the center, which first circulated in December and resurfaced recently. In case you missed this one, here is a video to remind you. Conservation Center, I've been here many, many times and the previous three will be a testimony to that. Um, but this time around, I'm making this vlog because of a very shocking thing I experienced. 
to know now is that the special assistant to the governor on tourism um, and arts and culture who led the visit to the center said that the broken segments, which was what was referenced in the video, had already been repaired and restored to normal upon inspection. But the sites would remain shut for further maintenance. At the end of the day, we're all back into this situation where there is again yet another reactive and not proactive response. And we're back. If we list one of our problems in Nigeria, maintenance will be probably in the top five yes. because a lack of a maintenance culture is one of the things that gets us into many of the issues we face in the country. Oh, Ladies. It's, <laughs> is that, it's like it's a... It's a rec Recursion. Our troubles in Nigeria, our travails, honestly, it never changes. Do you know that it's just the problems that we have are actually quite solvable? Uh, if we do not, if we stop putting the cart before the horse. Before we went on the break, we talked about reactions. We are very emotional in our reactions and it's until there's noise made about it. Yes. Then the government steps on, uh, like, steps, I mean, rides into you know, they the, do that, like the prince. Racing horse. Yes. Voila. Yeah. And, and then come in and sweep the day and say, okay, guys, we'll listen to you. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Mm. We're going to sort out one or two things and do some repairs. So, that should have been in government. No, 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 way, just go. You know, you know, yes. <laughs> but do you know that Lekki yeah. Conservation Center is a tourism site? It's one of the main tourism sites. It's a money-making venture. Yeah. Honestly, that means that the, the maintenance of the place should be ongoing. The it's not until there is a major catastrophe, especially that canopy wall. That war. canopy wall. Do you know it's yeah. one of the ones that they say is one of the longest in Africa? I still, let me, let me be honest, I wanted to go on that thing for like four or five years. I still have not gotten God, the, I the have, gumption I have gone go. on it once yeah. and honestly, I, I felt it was very exhilarating. Yeah. Yeah. But it's something they need to maintain because it's quite high. Yeah, and if it's it's from there, trust me, it's totally fatal. <laughs> but so that means maintenance shouldn't be until something goes wrong. Does this not remind you of the situation that happened in December with the, uh, amusement park. the, the water park that water opened? Park, yes. And I'm not sure if they reopened up to now, but it wasn't until some people, somebody got injured. She yes. split her lip on one of the rides. Yes. Uh, she did a video. It was a really, really massive thing. But this guy had said he had done international certifications. Lagos State had come to mm. check before he opened. Mm. But as of now, it seemed like we're, we're lackadaisical when it comes to these things. And that place is a really, really interesting place to go. I know foreigners who come and who go to Lekki Conservation Center. And this is just an issue that we don't want to repeat itself. And it never should have come up because it should have been a regularly scheduled ma maintenance or somebody regularly walking the canopy yeah. and making sure that all the and nuts and bolts are in place. Another thing that we don't do in Nigeria is that most of the time, all these contractors are always cutting costs. Mm. Where they need to get an engineer to look some to look at something, they will call artisans. But Maybe Baba Yabo, that is an electrician. If they're or, cutting costs, they're cutting costs because now that is a topic for another day. Because if mm. we delve into it and open and peel off the layers, they, there's more to that. Because if you're cutting costs, if someone says, I need 40 billion to do this job, and mm. you say, I don't have 40 billion, I'm going to give you 15 billion. And then don't forget, in that 15 billion, somebody yeah, else will take a little bit of Somebody will cut a little bit of that. My own is this. And then by the time you're sorting out all of that, what are you left with? Hmm. The initial plan and vision that you had to do your repairs, you can't. So you fall back to artisans. And so who is, who, who they do who? <laughs> the thing is, if they do not regulate, we're going to keep having major catastrophes. Because we need to check the age, not just the agencies, we need to hold people respond, accountable for the acts of, in law, you're, you're responsible for the acts of your servants. Mm -hmm. So if you do not do your due diligence, you employ people that are not thorough to because somebody stead. must have gone to acting inspect mm. some yeah. of these things. Yeah. So and checked off. Yes, you can't just tell me that, oh, uh, we were we inspected, it was in good working conditions. If a demo no, comes back to you and tells should you, be done. if a demo comes back to you and tells you, yes, sir, we were there, everything yeah. seems to be working fine, mm -hmm. and this kind of thing happens, yeah. you cannot fire a demo because you know a demo is that person that does, is, is a, a free runner for you. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that, that covers you mm -hmm. when you are not around. Yes. And so you cannot, normally, you would say it as much. time to go. Yes. But you cannot let go of a demo because there are so many invisible strings attached to a demo being there. Mm. Hmm. And this also reminds me of the hospital situation, um, the young doctor that we lost last year. Oh, when that the was elevator. very disheartening. And you, we spoke to them at New Central, and they told us that they had repeatedly, repeatedly asked for this elevator to be repaired, to be shut down, to something for it to, hap uh, to be taken care of. And then at the end of the day, we lost a young, promising doctor.
her family lost someone that they loved and someone they'd invested in, and then we get to a situation, till date, who's really accountable, who's really responsible for, for her death? Because even though you might say it's an accident, there's a responsibility. Yes. She would not have died otherwise in that situation if somebody had done their job. And another thing I hate is the fact that we like to cover people for their yeah. misdeeds. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if it's about keeping faces or just keeping up appearances. If people are not made to you know, be accountable mm -hmm. for their actions, that lady's death now, it probably maybe I do not know what has happened thereafter. But these are stories that we do not need. To, we cannot continue to sweep under the rug. Yeah, yeah. If someone was held and everybody knows that, ah, this person went down for this mishap mm -hmm. happening in the hospital. Every do you know that every, not just in the hospital, mm -hmm. you see that it, it's a ricochet, it's a, yeah. it's a ripple thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You find out that everybody will start checking the things they need to check mm -hmm. because they don't want that kind of thing to happen before they begin to do the maintenance that they need to yeah. do. But now we talked about the story. It's sensational for a while, but the people, the family that lost their daughter, mm -hmm. a doctor that mm -hmm. is just about to finish. Man. Do you know how much, we have all moved on. To us, maybe in the media, it's a story. Open-ended, mm -hmm. never finding a conclusion. Yeah. And if you find out that a lot of stories that we carry in the media yeah. is open-ended, yeah. there is no conclusion. Mm -hmm. We cannot say there's no closure for the family. Yeah. Even for some of the students, do you know how traumatized on, huh? so, some so, of those interning yeah. in the hospital would be? At the end of the day, it also means that the society lacks justice. Mm. We lack justice mm -hmm. because when people are not held accountable to the places we put in their trust, that means we lack justice as a society. Yeah. And yes. a society that cannot enforce justice is a society that really needs to question itself. And so, then we're going on blindly because we do. If, we're not, if we're not questioning us, if not questioning ourselves and our, allowing these things to continue, if you want to plot the graph of this, you know how mathematicians, okay, let's plot a graph mm -hmm. to see how what is going on. We are blind. There's no, we are working blind. There's no future. There's nothing you can see. There's no freaking light at the end of the, of the <laughs> tunnel. No. And our government officials, every one of them travel out. Every one of them, I believe, sees how things are working done. Working societies. What I keep saying in Nigeria that, oh, if it's a discovery we're making, then that's novel. But this is not a eureka moment mm -hmm. where you just shout, wow, this is light. It's been done everywhere. Yeah. So it's not rocket science. It's yeah. not so... Hard to fathom. So what is the problem? Is it jazz that is doing? It's What's people alone. Now we you know, have our own problems. You know, every little thing so we say is spiritual. What us. is the problem? I want it's us, us as a people. <laughs> Ladies, I want to also take the other parts of this. So we've talked about the safety, yeah. the maintenance part of it. And we also need to note that this video first came out in December. Mm -hmm. This is almost the end of January, January that it's now being taken care of because the video resurfaced. Yes. So are you telling me that all the people who visited from that time, the guy made the video and possibly posted it till now, walked on that canopy like that? We said we flew, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing food for thought today. Mm. But the other part of this is also around tourism, and you mentioned it earlier. The yeah. tourism opportunities that we ah. miss. Leke Conservation is one of the, the lungs of Lagos. Another oh, yes. one is, of course, um, Desmond Majeko Dumi's yeah. um, place that he has. Mm. Uh, oh, that also is known as the, the lungs of Leke as well. Uh, what's uh, it called? Um, ah, Lufasi. Lufasi. Oh, my gosh. I was thinking of Lufasi. 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 The National Theatre in prime location, mm -hmm. you see the lagoon mm -hmm. with styrofoam, I need to point out, styrofoam yes. packs inside. Uh -huh. You are just thinking to yourself, what are we missing out on? Other places would have turned that into a multimedia hall, cinemas, hotels, restaurants, shopping. Yeah. You'll be seeing boats in the lagoon. <sighs> It'll be restocked with fish. Yeah. And I know somebody yeah. out there is going to be saying, oh, you're talking like you don't know Nigeria. Yeah. But we need to start picturing a Nigeria that, that is better than where we yeah. are. Honestly, I, I, when you look at me, maybe because we're, I'm, a th I'm a thespian on the side, when you look at national theater, it's something that makes me cry. The beauty of that place, have you passed it at night? Imagine when it's Christmas. lighted up. Everybody abroad is watching. You know the world has become a global village. Oh, yes, it has. Look at foreigners Definitely. jumping on Nigerian yeah. trends like tomorrow, yeah. not day. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. this yeah. is so cool. cool. Dancing Afrobeat, to Burner Boy. Oh, uh, Afrobeat is so eating mainstream our food, now. Yeah. Eating our food. Mm -hmm. But these are the things that put us in light. And now when they focus on Nigeria as a place, 
and we begin to hear this kind of terrible and gory stories mm. coming out. And you're wondering, they've been trying to rehabilitate National Theatre forever. Yes. Hmm? How come we have never been able to do it? I remember many years ago, we used and to go there to watch properly. plays, mm -hmm. yes. films, mm -hmm. and the grounds yes. are beautiful. For family getaway, family. For family. Oh, gosh. Okay, ladies, I need to pause us, because I feel like if we continue down this train of thought, it's going to be one that lands us somewhere we don't want to go. <laughs> we don't want to carry this conversation where we don't know. But it's Thoughtful Thursday, so... They're I mean, still thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, so people should think about it. So we're going to give them something else to think about because yeah. education is on the front burner for us this morning where we have the former commissioner of education in Lagos State joining us, and that's coming up after the break. You're watching Just Three. Please don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag Just Three, and, of course, uh, be with us on social media at New Central TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Jassiri, where we're bold and fearless. Um, let's continue with discussions this morning. The success of every nation starts with education. Leaders are not born, they are made. And if we are bringing up our children to become leaders of tomorrow, then it is their fundamental human right to have access to quality, safe and affordable education as the foundation to becoming catalysts of nation development, poverty alleviation, healthy societies, gender equality, peace, and stability. As we join with the rest of the world to commemorate the International Day of Education, themed uh, uh, Learning for Lasting Peace, which was celebrated yesterday, January 24, it is important to address the challenges still impeding the sector and explore the possible solutions that will foster its overall development and well-being of our nation. How we respond to these challenges will determine if we can meet the target set by the Sustainable Development Goal. Uh, free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education for all children by 2030. And so joining the conversation now is an academician, educationist and the former commissioner for education in Lagos State, Falashade Adefisayo. She joins us today on Jassiri. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I, I, we want to start with a bit of your background. You've been an educationist for many years. Before your appointment, you served at Corona Schools Trust Council for 12 years and also managed a mega school in, Osh uh, in Oshun State, so the Oshubu Government High School. So you're tested in both the public and private sectors as well. What does quality education mean to you, especially for Nigeria's young children? What's the best representation of that for the average Nigerian child? Well, to me, quality education speaks to a child being able to meet his or her full potential. It, 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 it's not just passing exams. It's just, it, it gives you enough, it, it gives you the talents, the gifts, the, the learning, the knowledge, the, the critical understanding of the world to become who you were meant to be. So that for me is quality education. Um, okay, ma'am, let's focus on public education because that's very, very important. Yeah. There's still a lot of Nigerians that that's where they all fit in. Yeah. They cannot afford um, the private sector. Uh, there are not enough classrooms to accommodate the growing population. That's always been a challenge. And in many areas, the state and the facilities are all run down. In fact, we've seen many videos where you see students sitting on the floor. And there are also instances where students cannot even access the school due to things like flooding, so how can we de deliver quality education where we have this very dilapidating infrastructure? Well, you see, we just have to fund education. Mm. It, it's not, uh, education is expensive because mm. you really have to have the buildings. It's labor intensive because if you have 20 buildings in a school, that is a minimum of 20 teachers right away. Mm. Not to talk of other teachers who are like, you know, specialist teachers. So it's quite clear that we have to put our money where our mouth is. If you don't fund it, it's not, there's, no, there's no magic coming mm -hmm. from anywhere. And um, when we talk about buildings now, I think more and more we have to start thinking of more creative solutions. Because I'm wondering, why do we need, we don't need to build all the time. Yeah. There are many, many structures around us that are seriously underutilized. Mm. Why don't we take advantage of them? Why can't the public sector work with private schools? I went for a meeting once where many of the private schools in a particular state, the enrollment was dropping because people just couldn't afford it. So they said, why don't you take up the space? Pay us a little bit and we'll take in these children. Mm. Some are not 
being frank, I mean. Yeah. But one could do that. So why must we always think about building, building, building? So we have to come up with more creative solutions. We have to see how we can deploy the power of technology. Mm -hmm. And certainly, we have to fund education. I, I want to pick up on something you said, that education is expensive. Yeah. And I don't think many of us really realize how much it costs to educate one child. And you talk about infrastructure, the teacher salaries, mm -hmm. uh, there's the books that they need. But we are seeing a decline in the ability of our populace to afford it. That compromise in between, you talked a bit about the private sector now. We know that there are education trust funds in different states and things yeah. like that. That compromise in between, because you can pay for a better education, but are you getting the education that you can't pay for because you can't afford it? How do we bridge that divide? It's, it's really important, <coughs> because even up to the tertiary level, what we are paying for seems to be what we're getting. But when you ever hear a conversation about raising school fees or anything like that, it's a no. And we understand what our society and what our people are going through, but education is expensive. It is. I, I still think that uh, when you talk about public schools, I think the states should really put more money into education. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just putting money into education, into the right things. Because uh, many studies, I mean, there are studies that show that <laughs> Nigeria has spent more on education than many countries in sub-Saharan Africa with less to show for it. Mm -hmm. So it's the efficiency and effectiveness of the funds. So it's important that we fund it appropriately. We put enough money into education to ensure that every child has a chance. Mm. Because you are giving a child a chance when you send a child to school. And so, like they say, you send a child to school, you close the doors of a prison. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So why aren't we putting our money there? I believe the, I believe the public should hold governments more accountable. Put more money into your budget for education. You see, if you solve education problems, you solve a lot of problems, even environmental problems. Yes. Mm. You can even reduce your health budget eventually. Yeah. Insecurity could also be solved yeah. with more education. education. Yeah. Okay. An educated Listen. mother. Mm -hmm. can you, you, you can imagine how she'll bring up her children. Her children. Yeah. You, know. you know, let's focus a little bit on Lagos because that's the epicenter. That's where we are at. And uh, would you say that, um, let's stay with infrastructure for, let's say, uh, and you look at it that, one, Lagos State has the issue of migration. Uh -huh. A lot of people are migrating into the states from everywhere. I know at the time that you were still in government, what data would you say you gathered or uh, had to indicate how migration into the state is impacting enrollment and admission? You know, vis-a-vis -vis readily available facilities mm -hmm. and uh, to accommodate the growing number of public school uh, system. And not just in Lagos. Now we have the pro proliferation of private I would call them questionable. private, <laughs> questionable schools. Mm. So now we say we want education. But what do we do about the population in Lagos alone? Would you say that the, the, the public schools in Lagos are equipped enough to even serve the great uh, uh, population. population? Let's even talk about numbers. There are not enough of them. Frankly, wow. there are just not enough schools. Public or private? Public. Public or okay. private. And so there's no gap in nature. So once uh, people will take advantage, yeah. there are like 1,013 or 16, uh, I think 1,016 mm. public primary schools. And for a state that says its population is 20 million, mm. 1,016 mm. is really inadequate. And uh, there are about 350 to 360 junior secondary and senior secondary. So obvious, and so all these children are moving into, senior, into junior secondary and senior secondary. Those low cost uh, private schools are moving into public secondary schools as well. So they are severely overstretched. That's mm -hmm. why I said I do believe, so we did collect that data. I mean, you asked me about data. There's also the data on uh, people coming to Lagos. According to UNESCO, and I hesitate because I'm never sure, mm -hmm. but it says something like 85 people come to Lagos every day. Yeah, <laughs> not every day, not every day. Every, every hour. hour. It's about an hour. Mm -hmm. It's not somewhere I saw seconds. That's why I said I'm <laughs> But it's certainly not every day. <laughs> okay. It's certainly much, much more, more than much every more. day. Wow. But uh, uh, on, on, Sorry, on, on a unit in a day, so maybe an hour, and they don't go back. Mm. So when you consider the stretch on the facilities, that's why I said maybe thinking and going forward, we need to be more creative in how we mop up. Because Lagos never had this big problem of out-of-school children, but it's increasing, and yes. it's growing, and it's going to keep growing. And it's not just because there are not enough schools, but it's because there's also the cultural practice. These people come from very, very extreme poverty, and uh, so there must be a way to, to mop up these children. That's why I said, why don't you look for more creative solutions, like not just building? 
I, I want to add to her data because I quickly went and I, I went to look for it. So it was former governor of Lagos State, Akinwumi um, Ambode, who said that 86 migrants enter Lagos every minute of the day, which is the highest rate of any city in the world, and they have no plan to leave. Now, going by that statement, Nigeria's economic capital receives around 123,840 visitors on a daily basis. Please. This was in 2016. That's my I'm knowledge. sure it's much uh, because higher. Yeah, I'm sure it's higher now. But let's just, since we have that data, yes, for sure, let's go with it. can you imagine the impact of that data yeah. on, on social services, on yeah. housing? Wow. on? But we're not even doing, if we're looking at the latest rec um, um, records by World Bank, um, as at two years ago, that's in November mm -hmm. two, 2022, our literacy rate was 62%. That's Nigeria as a country. Okay. And that's two years ago. So approximately 68% of youth in Nigeria have received some form of secondary education, uh, which is the highest level of education they have attained. Around 15% of them completed primary education. Only 17% pursued higher studies after secondary. Now, what are some of the factors which would hinder access and inclusivity, especially in low-income communities? Well, there is poverty. That's it. That's it's the, the overarching thing. problem yeah. mm -hmm. that and so 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 many of these children have to leave school even earlier that's why i said some form maybe like when they get to gs3 and they see oh you're big enough go out and start working mm -hmm. or go out go out and get married you know so it's poverty and uh, yeah it is poverty number one is poverty but then of course it's also that i strongly believe that the school system can do a lot better to address that I mean, I, I am someone who believes that the school system is not, it assumes everybody is going to university, which is ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Yes. So why aren't there, in, within the school system, other tracks? You say, oh, we have technical colleges. Mm -hmm. There are usually mm -hmm. few, maybe four or five in yes, the state. Yes, actually. Yeah. Lagos yeah. has five. So why isn't the secondary school education more inclusive, more, uh, you know. Uh, robust. Uh, more robust, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that every child lives with something. Yes other than just formal education. Even if you are going to university and you learn photography, mm. you'll be able to it's pay your way. Yes. Even if it's, I know a child who learned ceramics and she was from a poor, because you know I've worked also outside Lagos, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the Marshall State. And she came from there to Lagos, she learned ceramics. And so she sent herself to school, she sends herself to school, she doesn't ask anybody for anything. She makes nice pots, pots and plants for her friends and, and so on. So why aren't we ensuring that every child leaves us with something? So I think, again, the curriculum is a, I, I I was a big I, issue. We were about to go there, yes. So it's, it's breadth, it's depth, it's relevance. Mm -hmm. Relevance being the big part of it. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but that's relevance point you're yeah. saying is yeah. major for me because yeah. we're in the fourth industrial revolution. We're the mm -hmm. internet of things. We're in mm -hmm. cloud computing. Mm -hmm. We're in artificial intelligence. Where is our, AI. Where, where yeah. is the generative AI? AI. I saw a video <laughs> yesterday of um, Oprah Winfrey and Kiki Palmer supposedly endorsing an hair product. It was a generated AI video. And I could have sworn, someone who was watching yes, it for all my life, anywhere. that it was her. So when we're seeing what the world is going to and the global com competitiveness and links of it, we obviously see that our curriculum, be it on the federal level or the state mm. level, is not addressing see. the Nigeria we want or the children we want for a better Nigeria. Nigeria. So in terms of curriculum, in, particularly for rele relevance, how do we address that? Because also curriculum means better mm -hmm. teachers, yes. better quality teachers. <laughs> you can't give what you don't yes, have. Yes, no. better educated teachers, yep. yes. Well, uh, when it comes to teacher training as well, of course, if one part is obsolete, everything is obsolete. Hmm. So I also, as a person, feel that uh, teacher training curriculum is inadequate you know, because it's too theory-based. Theory like, I can give you many theories, or oh, Vygotsky's theory, Piaget's theory. Uh, you know, things like that. But how to teach in the classroom? How to engage learners? How to deploy technology in the classroom? How to have, uh, um, you know, multiple assessment strategies and so on? Hmm. How to integrate what we call the 21st century skills to what you are doing? They're just not part of the teacher training curriculum. So I think, again, we really need to have serious conversations about looking at our curriculum across board, even at tertiary level. Because at tertiary level, too, you know, many people graduate from our universities. When you talk of relevance, they are not relevant. Mm. People come to me, get me a job. Get, I can't get you a job. What did yeah. you study? 
Uh, it, it has no bearing on what the society I would on what say, corporate Nigeria needs. Yeah, we are churning out oh. uneducated oh. graduates or unemployable. They're unemployable. Graduate. You know, let me just, uh, because we're talking that, let me just streamline it again. Because according to the latest records by the World Bank, yeah. um, yeah, about, by November, yeah. uh, they said about, uh, no, 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 I was saying UNESCO actually mm -hmm. in 2022 says we have over 20 exactly. million mm -hmm. out of school children okay. in Nigeria. And the bad thing is that 60% of them are girls. So girl education is still something that should be a topic of discussion. And that, that's a significant rise uh, compared to the 10.5 million that was recorded in 2021. I know there is debate about the actual numbers mm -hmm. and um, you know all those ones are, we cannot mm -hmm. go there. But there is no real alternative. Reliable data published by the Federal Ministry or any other reputable body, what interventions can we even put in place to tackle these out of children, out, out of, of school, school children and de-escalate this unimaginable margins that we're seeing mm. and I can tell you that I've heard it in Lagos State at least that they have some skill acquisition center here and there is that something that can help mop up this um, escalating margin and we've tried the school feeding program which was meant for parents to be able to say at least if the child least, goes to, go school, to school there'll be one meal I don't have to think about and some the success is hit yeah. or miss. Success. And now that we're even having <laughs> increments, <laughs> yeah. increment in school fees, mm. both public and, and private. private. So these are factors that are still working against. My PTA this. was on fire in December. Oh. <laughs> well, um, public schools are free in Lagos State. They don't pay fees at all. So there was no question of uh, increasing fees. Maybe that's, they are not even supposed to. Uh -huh, if the levies. state hears that, it's mm -hmm. a big problem for the head teacher. Good. Mm. They are not even supposed to levy. They are so, if you want to do anything, it's supposed to be voluntary. They're not supposed to levy anybody. So school fees are free. I mean, they, they, they don't charge in, school fees in, in Lagos. Public, yeah. In public, public schools public in Lagos. 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 No, no school fees charge. I mean, that, that's quite clear. But, um, you know, you've asked so many questions. There's so many issues. There's so many issues. There's so many we issues. Can't get you all the time. What, so what, what we're trying to talk about, calm uh, <laughs> everything. You know what? When I was coming, I said we, we are going to try and solve all of Nigeria's <laughs> problems today. <laughs> you know? So when we talk about out of school children, it, 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 it's, it's a terrible blot on the country. Yeah. Because everywhere you go now in the yeah, world, yeah, everybody says, oh, just imagine, you are sitting on 20 million. Mm. I don't know where the figure came from. It used to be 10 for a long time. Yes. Then one day we heard it was 20. 20 yeah. But my own feeling has always been, if it's one child, it's still it's one much. child too many. Mm. So we just have to ensure our children go to school. But again, it's creative thinking about what, what is school. Mm -hmm. It's clear we have mm -hmm. to rethink school as being within four a, walls. A, yeah, four a four walls of a, of a what, what do we like to call it when you say school is uh, purpose built? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if the other ways, when I will know started free education, and I studied this very deeply, people gave their houses. It was mm -hmm. clear there, were going to be, there was going to be a need for many more schools than they had. So people said, come, use my house. It's a room, four mm -hmm. by four, I mean, mm -hmm. four walls. And sit mm -hmm. there, put a, put a blackboard, get a good teacher. The most critical factor in any school is the teaching and learning. It's not the infrastructure, though that's important. Mm -hmm. So we have to be creative. That's why I said, why aren't we thinking about on, um, underutilized spaces? And mm -hmm. I don't want to start mentioning There's them. But so you know, there are so many. There are so many. Yeah. So and many. And we have more churches lot. than... <laughs> and they can even be converted because... If we have churches and mosques, during we can actually have them as, use them as spaces yeah, yeah. during the day. During the day, during it, the week. It's because we are not thinking in that We have line. to think creatively. Yeah. Yeah. And even online solutions. Yes, there are online solutions. Maybe children in marginalized, uh, far away yeah. uh, societies and um, communities where you can give them tablets and so on. You can look for... Nowadays, it's, it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. When you talk about technology, people will say, uh, we haven't even started talking about it. are talking about technology. Let me tell you, we have to leapfrog. We can't start thinking about First, if we had waited, we would still be using that phone that does this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if you show that phone, you show that phone to my daughter, she'll think it's that a phone that does work. I love no it. Connection. No connection. Then our phone does not know anything about, about that. It. No. <laughs> we, but we leapfrogged, right? Yeah. We, we, we leapfrogged into a mobile phone. So we have to leapfrog. I think we need to think creatively. And like you said, these vocational schools, expand them. And, and let them, you know, many of them do things that I really am not sure are relevant in today's oh. environment. 
we just have to start thinking, what, do, what does corporate Nigeria want? We have to start working with the private sector. What mm -hmm. do you want? Many of them have set up uh, the tra vocational training organizations. Yeah. You can't force them to do what they don't want to do. They have to set up training organizations that for their own, that their will feed needs. into their businesses. Mm -hmm. So support of some sort, it's just got to be a... It's so it can't be a, a, a single strategy. Yeah. It, it, it's got to be a, a serious, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, uh, multi layered, multi faceted, multi stakeholder, multiple, multiple stakeholder. Mm -hmm. yeah, multi -stakeholder. You have to work with the private sector, you mm -hmm. have to work with religious organizations, you have to work with a lot. We all have to come together because these are our children, this is the yeah. future. Yeah. We are sitting on. <laughs> okay, let's look at um, at the height mm. of the pandemic where schools were shut down, the yeah. sector is still playing catch up. Mm. Um, the private schools resorted to online online meeting platforms and, and while other public schools used other mediums like TV and radio to deliver um, to places that were not accessible, isn't that perhaps something that we can lean in on? Yes. Do we have the capacity actually to ensure mm. full access to learning in both urban and rural areas? Uh, with the, do you think do you think our educational system here can survive a second time around? Because in COVID, we made th we made sure things happened, yeah. and we adapted. Can't we adapt? Because the problem of education in Lagos is like the French say, say grave, is is deep, is profound. I say sometimes English is not enough. <laughs> English English is not carried the weight, and of course I lessons you, we I might have you. learned from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think we learned a lot of lessons, but yes. I think we also went back. To our old ways. Old ways. <laughs> wow. Too easily. Because during the pandemic, it yes. was like, and when you talk about private schools, yeah. always qualify them. Mm -hmm. well. They're about eighteen to 20,000 in Lagos. Uh, the number of schools that could afford what you're talking about I mean, is an insignificant mm -hmm. proportion of that number. Wow. Most of them could not. So mo most children just didn't go to school at all, except they used the facilities of the public uh, schools. And uh, so we, we tried to work with some of them. You know, mm -hmm. use the, of course, they were all on TV, they were all on uh, mm -hmm. this in radio. Yeah. And uh, there, were, there were also websites, there were also um, hubs and so on. People gave us access. So we had about three different companies give us free access to their, uh, yeah, to their facilities. So if you had access to a computer, to ac had access to data, you could, you, could, you could log on. But again, we've allowed it to lapse, and it's a pity, really, mm. because we could have played on what we... Because we found we had the strength to react. Yes. Mm. We, because when it happened, it was like, this is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Many people were so angry. They're still angry till today with yeah. me in some places mm. that you closed down the school for nine months. But that was what everybody did. Yeah. Now, what we had to do was think of creative solutions to children staying at home. So I think uh, we allowed it to lapse. I mean, um, I, I always try to be frank. We did. Mm. We could have utilized those strengths and continued to build on that trajectory. Trend. Yeah, building on that. Is it too late to do that? No, it's not. It no, it's not. Mm. No, it's not. Because, because many of those it. facilities are still there. Yes. Uh, many of those teachers are still there. You know, to even get teachers to teach on TV was quite challenging. They are used to teaching children in face the class, to face. But yeah. you had to train them. And honestly, people came together at that time. You know, yes. we were given free TV access for yeah. a year. A whole year, we were given free TV access. So as she said, she, as she said when she was coming, we want to try and solve all the problems of Nigeria's education and all these issues, but it's well, not enough. There's not mm, enough time because mm. we still wanted to talk about uh, remuneration, relevant mm. and modern learning resources. We've we have to bring her back. Yes, about updated yes. curriculum, so much more, even special <laughs> needs as well. Yeah. Uh, and there's a growing number of children across the states and across Nigeria that have special needs yeah. and whose training or whose teaching methods need to be slightly different. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, we do not have time. So yeah. I'm holding you. Lagos, let's hold her right now. You're coming back. Yes. Same. You're coming back. Yes, yes. Ma. It'll yes. be a pleasure. Okay. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Thank you for having me. Ah, thank so you much. so much. Thank thank you. You. Okay, so, so my, much. My, my ears are full. Um, we've had a fantastic time um, with the former uh, commissioner. But we'll take a, a quick break now. But don't go anywhere because <laughs> when we return, it'll be time for our topics. Okay. Catherine, I promise you hot topics, but unfortunately we're breaking that promise because we don't have a lot of time. But I said earlier that there's a, there's a story to this dress. And if I tell you that I'm leaving and I can't say what is inside me, I will be unhappy. Confess by yourself or I'll confess for you. No, no. I will confess for you. Why are you entering me before it was Lolo? 
Catherine. I don't know why. Honestly. And I said, should we share the beef? Honestly, I... we need to talk about people. We need to investigate thoroughly <laughs> vampire women because people there is came... no way she's going to tell me that this beautiful okay. dress she's having on. Talk it. Say it yourself. Okay. Uh -huh. Before, okay, all right. So I hereby confess um, on Jassiri this morning mm -hmm. that um, it's my... Um, <laughs> um, she's wearing her 15-year-old daughter's, daughter's dress. dress. <laughs> Coco. <laughs> huh. 15, Kath <laughs> Catherine. <Ma. laughs> she, she's wearing wow. the heck out of this dress, but she's wearing her 15-year... Women who can wear their children, their daughter... <laughs> my daughter wears my clothes is understandable. Can you wear her clothes? No. No. Some. I still have my mm -hmm. own. Maybe because, because I saw this, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and try and fit into some of our Me, we're already fighting with shoes. <laughs> we just wanted to end, it there, to end things on a light note. I can't believe that she did that to me. I did. They no, did that Because to it me. looks good on you. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. Thank you. So, fancy, you don't, don't be upset. You don't the story behind Arabi. We'll, we'll yeah. leave that other story. Yeah. We have to head out of the studio now, but don't forget that you need to join us tomorrow. We have a special guest joining us, and it is a full day of hot topics. Hey. That promise we won't break to you tomorrow. 10 a.m. West African time right here on News Central. We will be back. You guys have a lovely day. And of course, it's what how do we go? How do we go? Adios. Bye bye. Adios. Ciao. Uh, bye. Arrivederci. Yeah, boo. Yeah, boo. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one. <laughs>